Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Thank you for coming to our presentation about Dean's List Essays and Recommendation Letters. So, my name is Lauren Jefferson. I am a school counselor and also a lead mentor on First Robotics Team 181, The Birds of Prey. I've been a volunteer for eight years and I'm also a first alum from Team 1124. My name is Caroline Marr. I am a high school math teacher and a lead mentor for Team 175, Buzz Robotics. I've been a volunteer for 15 years and I am also an alum of Team 175. All right, so just to go through the agenda, we're gonna talk about the requirements for the Dean's List essay, just to give you a sense, especially if you've ever written bef one before, of what it is that they're looking for in the essay. Talk about the basics of what information should go into the essay, things to do and things that are really encouraged when you're writing the essay, things not to do in the essay that kind of detract from you being able to highlight your student and their accomplishments. And then at the end, we're gonna talk about a little bit about the difference between Dean's List and recommendation letters, because I know a lot of mentors who end up writing Dean's List essays or mentors in general end up having to write recommendation letters for students. Um, and so why we're specifically interested in Dean's List essays, uh, we both write Dean's List essays for our teams, uh, and we also frequently write recommendation letters. Lauren, as a guidance counselor, has to write dozens of them each year, and I, as a teacher, also write recommendation letters for my students and team members. And then both of us have done, have judged Dean's List on multiple occasions. So, Dean's List uh, requirements. Um, so the Dean's List requirements, students must be in either 10th or 11th grade. Um, the nomination has to be submitted by either the lead mentor or the Dean's List award submitter. The nominating mentor must not be related to either nominated student. And you'll submit either the student GPA or a description of their academic ability, and then a 4,000 character essay. So the criteria include demonstrating leadership and commitment to first core values. So essentially, how has this student been a leader on your team and how have they been demonstrating the core values of first? How effective have they been in spreading first in the community and in the school? So how are they a cheerleader for first? Have they been doing a lot of outreach related to first in your team? Interest in and passion for long-term commitment to first. So does your student have plans of being involved with FIRST when they graduate? Are they a volunteer now? Where do they see themselves continuing with FIRST once they're no longer a student on your team? Additionally, they're looking for the overall individual contribution to your team. So essentially, how has the student specifically impacted your team? Their technical expertise and passion, so what Areas of the team are they involved in? How involved are they? What have they built or created for your team to help them be successful? Entrepreneurship and creativity. So how have they contributed to how your team runs? What is something really unique to them on the team in their specific role that they're doing with the team that maybe students either on your team haven't done before or it's a role that's very unique to your team? And then finally, the ability to motivate and lead fellow team members. So how do they make sure everyone else on your team is getting the most out of their first experience? And how have they led your team to success on both a large and small scale? Good, and Lauren, I don't know if we mentioned this, but as we're going through, if anybody has any questions, feel free to post them in the chat and we will answer them at the end of our presentation. So first we're gonna talk about the basics of the Dean's List essay. So the way you wanna think about the Dean's List essay is it's really 
kind of like that persuasive essay that you learn to write in maybe like fourth grade. Um, and it's a persuasive essay where the thesis of your essay is that your, stu your student deserves to win the Dean's List Award. So one of the biggest things with the Dean's List essay is you want to make sure that everyone is you. You want to make sure that like, even if you're writing for two students who have done something that is very similar on your team or have had very similar accomplishments, you're doing things in within the essay to distinguish the student. You don't want to use the same wording or examples for the student because then it makes it harder for both their individual contributions to shine out and also for judges to be able to distinguish them. So it's a copy paste example here, but there are a lot of times where sometimes people just use very similar templates and very similar flows for both of their essays and that can really hurt your student applicants. You also wanna make sure that you're being very specific when you're writing your essay. If your essay sounds like it can be about multiple students, then it's gonna be much harder to distinguish your student from the rest of the students in the applicant pool. I'm not sure if there's an average for Dean's List in terms of how many students are um, entered per competition, but it can sometimes be up to 20. So if you wanna say something like, your student was a leader on the mechanical team, I can guarantee you at least half of the students who are in that pool are also a leader on their team's mechanical team. So the more detail and the more examples you can use when you're doing your essay, the better it's going to be in order to represent your student and also help differentiate them from the rest of the group. Basically, we want to make sure that you're writing about a person and not just a generic child. If your essay could apply to multiple people on your team, you definitely want to think about ways that you can make it specific. So Lauren and I have sort of made up some examples of good and bad essays. We didn't use any essays we've actually read. We wrote our own. But an example of what would be sort of a generic essay, Bob is one of the most excellent students I've ever worked with. He's a leader on both the build team and the chairman's team. Whenever there's a project that needs to be accomplished, mentors know that they can trust Bob to get it done in a timely manner. Bob sounds great, but he also sounds like a student that exists on pretty much all of our teams. So if we want to really make Bob stand out, we need to give a specific example about who he is. So on the last weekend before our competition, Bob realized that our ball feeder mechanism did not work. He immediately gathered a team of students and began working to redesign the ball feeder. Bob realized that the mechanism was not providing enough compression through the pathway. And with the help of his fellow students, he altered the design for the mechanism in CAD to provide more compression. He then delegated the work manufacturing the components to his fellow students on the build team. By Tuesday, the new mechanism was ready. So this is a dynamic story about this student. It tells something specific about him, and it tells the readers that you, the person writing it, really know this student and really care about them individually and are recommending them individually. So when you're writing the essay, in addition to making sure that you're writing something that is very specific to that student and also has very specific de details and examples, you want to leave out some of the less notable contributions. Some of the strongest Dean's List student or Dean's List candidates you'll have on your team have done so many things and you've only got 4,000 characters. So you definitely want to make sure that you're leading with the things that are the most important, not just for your team, but also for your student. So if there's something that, if there's a small role that they had, if you have the characters, you can definitely mention it, but you don't want to spend time highlighting a role that wasn't as major as some of their other contributions and also wasn't as important to them. You also definitely want to make sure your student has read the essay. This is one of the requirements technically in the submission. So 
do you want not just want them to read it just so you can check the box off, but you want them to really know the content of the essay because they're going to be asked specific questions from it. This is the big, the first thing that the judges really get to see before they interview your student. So you want to make sure that the student is fully aware of what's in the essay and what they can be asked about. Um, when you're writing about things, you definitely want to make sure you have enough background on the student or on the thing that they have accomplished. So if you need more background on it, talk to another mentor, talk to the student themselves. But you definitely want to make sure about that you're talking about things that they consider important and also why these contributions matter to your team. And finally, you definitely want to make sure that the contributions are real and meaningful to your team. Um, don't make things up. A lot of times students themselves will be like, actually, I don't remember doing that. So you definitely want to make sure that everything about the essay is authentic. So here's one good example. Uh, Bonnie realized that there was a need for CAD on our team in order to create a more efficient prototype. So she spent the preseason learning SolidWorks. Basically, this is explaining that she found a need on the team that needed to be filled and that she went out of her way to be able to fill that role. A not so good example would be that you wrote that Paul helped mentor an award winning first Lego League team, but he only went to one meeting and can't talk about it. As a judge, if I see that a student has made a very impactful contribution, I'm really going to want to know why that was meaningful to them and how they got involved in that process and what exactly their specific contributions are for that process. So anything that you include in the essay is fair game, and especially things that really jump out. Like if you have, if you're saying that a student made a significant contribution that, for instance, led to your team winning an award they've never won before, or led to you getting a sponsor that you've never had before. You really want to make sure that the student can talk about that. So you really want to use all the space you have. So you have 4,000 characters, you should really be using them all. When we see an essay come through that's only a couple of paragraphs, that's usually pretty disappointing, especially because in a lot of those cases, we talk to the student and we realize that there's so much to know about that student. And it's disappointing to see that the essay that was written for them was really short. Um, the suggestion that Lauren and I both use is that when we write the essay at first, we ignore the character limit. And then we go back and we remove the extra fluff. We take out maybe the contributions that aren't as significant. We take out um, we abbreviate first terms, we maybe take out some anything that's like us just trying to be fancy when we write. So start by ignoring the character limit and then cut it down. That's going to make a denser essay filled with more better information. And you also want to use your resources. So you probably want to have the best writer on your team compile the essay, whether or not they're the person who works the most with the student, and then get examples and details and technical information from the person who works with the student the most. And in a Dean's List essay, quotes and examples from other mentors are really highly encouraged. And you want to have multiple proofreads, um, especially right before you submit it. If you're cutting things out to get down to a character limit, it's really easy to accidentally cut something that makes it so that something doesn't make sense. Yeah. So here are some things that are not to do and things that will definitely make the judges cringe. Maybe not in front of your student, but definitely behind the scenes. So you are not the subject of the essay. The Dean's List reviewers don't need to know your qualifications at Bet at most we really need to know how long you've known the student and in what context and you don't necessarily really need to include any personal details about your relationship with the student at all unless it's going to really add to the essay so you just again this is another thing where you just want to make sure that you're not going on and on about your particular qualifications or why you are the best person to nominate the student just because you want to make sure that the student is the highlight of the essay. 
it's important to understand that the award is really not for best essay. Your writing is not being evaluated. So you really don't need purple prose. You don't need fancy sentences. You don't need to make your writing pretty. And you definitely don't need any kind of motivational quotes. So our bad example, the expert in anything was once a beginner, Helen Hayes. This is truly the most veracious quote to represent Jeff. Jeff is zealous in his commitment to educating the new recruits at Team 9992. When he sees a student in peril, he surges into action. That's a lot of words and a quote, but it doesn't tell me very much about Jeff. If I use cleaner language, I can give you a lot more information about Jeff. So rookie students on Team 9992 know that one of their biggest supporters will be Jeff. He's always willing to help out our new students, to help our new students figure out how to complete a job or understand how the team works. Jeff is so committed to making sure rookies feel comfortable on our team that he started up a buddy system. Each rookie is paired with a veteran buddy who is responsible for showing them around the team and making sure they get answers to all of their questions. So I'm not using any fancy language here but I'm giving you a lot more impactful information about my student. So another point is that in addition to not wanting to include personal details about yourself as the nominator, you don't necessarily need to include a full description of your team and how it works. You really just want to add in team attributes when it's necessary. Again, you only have 4,000 characters, and within those 4,000 characters, it's very easy to be caught up in details about your team and trying to explain your team in ways that it doesn't really need to be explained. So if you've gotten, for instance, if your team has won the safety award for five years in a row, and, you, and you're nominating a student who's really had nothing to do with that, that detail doesn't really need to be in the essay. This is an opportunity really just to focus on a single contributor to your team in the way that other awards are very much a much broader focus. So there's plenty of awards that reward teams and team attributes and how teams work together. And this one is very focused directly on the student. So we've got more examples. At Riverdale High School, our values are diversity, excellence, and respect. Team 9992 is built around those values. As a team representing a Title I school district, many of our students face unique challenges at home and at school. Despite these unique challenges, Team 992 is a family. Our respect for each other has allowed us to grow from a team of only 10 members with a robot that can barely function during our rookie season to a team of 45 students and the robot that was an alliance captain of the finalist alliance at district championships. Zach was a big part of that success. So we've used about a fifth of our characters here and we don't know anything about the student. We have mentioned the student once and that was in the last sentence. So while it's great that these are your team values and this Paragraph as a whole doesn't really tell you anything about your specific student struggles or your specific the specific ways that your student embodies these values. And basically, you just want to limit it to how has this student spread the word of first, impacted your team, and not just how has your school or your team impacted your community for this specific award. So it's really important to remember that for the Dean's List, first is the judging criteria. You do see essays that are really focused on what the student does in general, but as judges, we can't really focus on that. So you really don't need to include non-robotics background unless it involves robotics. Academic qualifications are covered in a different portion of the nomination, so you have that section to show that they are a great student. And if you look back at the judging criteria, there are no non-first activities in them. I think we're going to take another look at a bad example. So as the child of a firefighter and a nurse, Drew grew up with a mantra of hard work as his life philosophy. As an honor student, he displays his commitment to hard work by taking four AP courses and honors pre-calculus. 
He also demonstrates his commitment and teamwork skills by being a two-sport athlete. He shows his compassion by volunteering weekly at the town food shelf. So in this case, Drew sounds like a great kid, but as a Dean's List judge, there's nothing in this paragraph that I can really use when it comes to judging Drew for the Dean's List Award. So... A logical is not a goal. What we mean by this is that we don't need the details to be in order of how they were created. Essentially, you don't need to start with your students freshman year on the team when they first joined and they were how and they were just first getting integrated. Or if you have students that have other first experience, you don't necessarily need to start with what they accomplished in their first Lego League team when they first joined in fourth grade. So you want to structure your details, or you want to structure your essay around the most important details and make sure the most important points are getting across. If it help, if it makes more sense in chronological order, definitely go with that. But you want to make sure that the details and the most important points are being highlighted. And if the other details are essentially fluff, you don't necessarily need to include them. So it's similar to our other points, but we just wanted to really get across that like, you don't really need to start with like your child's origin story. So we have another example to highlight this. Lisa first joined First Lady League Explorer when she was about six years old. Like any six-year-old, Lisa wasn't sure about this whole robotics team thing, but she did like spending time with her friends. When Lisa graduated the First Lego League, she joined the project team. She eventually became one of the leaders of the first Lego League project team. When Lisa joined team 9992 in ninth grade, she was already ready to be a contributing member of the team. During her first year, she joined the CAD team. After a year of being a member of the CAD team, she realized that she wanted to return to her roots communication. She joined our chairman's team as a sophomore. So there are some really great details in here that could kind of be pulled out. But again, you don't really need to start with this student had joined First Lego League Explorer when they were six years old. Because that, while that detail is important to show that their first history, you really want to be able to focus on the contributions. So saying they weren't sure about the whole robotics thing, that's a lot of characters that are being focused on the things that aren't going to be really contributing to giving us a picture of this whole of who this student is and why they're a good candidate for Dean's List. So the good example that we used, um, when Lisa joined Team 992, she was already a seven-year first veteran. As a result, she was a passionate advocate for the first mission when she first started FRC. When she became part of our of team, our chairman's team, during her sophomore year, she was able to use the skills and documentation and presentation that she learned as a leader of the Champions Award winning First Lady League team to take our Chairman's Award submission to the next level. So this does a really good job of highlighting the student's experience in FIRST and also how they've used that FIRST experience to contribute your team and also further the mission of FIRST. So it's not so caught up in the weeds and the details of trying to just like make sure all of the, you no. Know, origin story information is there, but it does provide it in a context where the judges are going to be able to take that information and say, oh, okay, this is the student who has been very committed to FIRST and has used that FIRST experience to better her team. Avoid negative comparisons. So you want to tell the judges what's great about your student. You don't need to compare them to other students. Um, passive negative comparisons can hurt the impact of your essay. So just to give a quick good and bad example, some students might see a challenge and try to find someone else to do the job, but not Pete. Pete sees a challenge and runs directly towards it. Towards it. That has a negative comparison to, a, to these other students that we just don't need. So and it's an easy thing to build into your essay without thinking about it. So when you go back and reread, just cut that out. Pete is a student who's willing to take on any challenge. He's always the first student to raise his hand when a unique task comes up. 
that second example is focused on my student, it's not making a negative comparison to anybody else, even if they're kind of a hypothetical example. All right, so we're gonna talk really quickly about recommendation letters and how they're different from the Dean's List essay, but also how some of the details that within the Dean's List essay can be incorporated into recommendation letters. So the big difference is, is that for Dean's List, you can only nominate two students. It's, it's 4,000 characters. Um, it's written for judges who specifically have a background in FIRST or at least are provided with a background in FIRST and a lot of context for FIRST. Um, the Dean's List really focuses on FIRST related in information only and it's, talk and it's talking mostly about how does your student represent FIRST. So the Dean's List has a very limited and focused scope and also the essay is quite a bit at its max length is quite a bit longer than what you want to write for a letter of recommendation. So a letter of recommendation you can write as many of these as you want or need to for students. They're limited to one page only. I didn't, I didn't put this in here specifically, but you want to make sure that if you're writing a letter of recommendation for a student, you actually put it on letterhead so it looks really nice if that's the format it's going to be submitted in. So if your team has team letterhead, use that. If you work for the school, school letterhead. Um, but the letter of recommendation is being written towards admissions officers or scholarship committees. So depending on what you're writing the letter of recommendation for, these people might be versed in first, they might not. They might be versed in mechanical engineering, they might not. So you re realize that you're writing for a much broader audience with a letter of recommendation, but you're still trying to get across that your student is a fantastic student and also will be a great addition to their campus or is deserving of the scholarship award or whatever the focus of your letter is, you just really wanna make sure that you're getting across the, that your child is great without getting too technical about it. Can I also just jump in? The other big difference is that your Dean's List essay is prepping the person reading it to interview your student whereas generally the person who reads a, le a letter of recommendation will not be speaking to your student. Um, also, so the letter of recommendation structure is a little bit different. Um, you're gonna start with an introduction. You do definitely wanna say how you know the student. Um, that's not necessary in a Dean's List essay because the assumption is you're their, me you're their mentor. Um, you want one to two sentences on key qualities and why you're recommending them, two to three paragraphs elaborating with evidence, and then a conclusion. I actually like to use the like five paragraph essay format that they taught back when we were kids. So um, we just wanted to kind of contrast how a detail that comes from a Dean's List essay might turn into a Dean's uh, detail for a recommendation letter. So during this past summer, Lori took it upon herself to rewrite the 2018 robot code to an object-oriented methodology. This command-based programming used multiple files representing different subsystems and commands. This made, made managing robot code much easier in the long term. It also allowed reuse of code between different game set segments, e.g. autonomous and teleop modes, reducing the chance of errors due to differences in codes. So we're making a lot of assumptions that the person reading this has some understanding of both first and a little bit of understanding of programming. Um, but we wouldn't really wanna do that if we were writing this for their college application. So when we write, rewrite this for a recommendation letter, we changed this into, during the summer after her sophomore year, Lori took it upon herself to rewrite the previous year's code using a new methodology, which makes code management much easier and reduces the chances for error. So we take out a lot of technical details. Um, we make it much shorter, which is good because we probably have other things, that we have less space and probably other things to say about Lori um, because we're not focused only on first. 
and make and remake it for an audience that doesn't know what, for example, teleop and autonomous mode are. So here are some general tips for recommendation letters, very similar to uh, this essay itself. You don't want to reuse letters between students. Um, a lot of times, if they're applying to the same college, they'll likely be read by the same admissions officer and that they will remember this. We've had admissions officers tell us that they will remember this. So you don't want to reuse letters between students, especially not in the same application year. If you're like me and you're really bad at just like spontaneously creating some things, you can reuse the structure. So if you want to reference another one that you've written in order to be like, oh, okay, these are generally how I should structure these, that's fine. It's fine if the letters are structured the same, but you want to make sure the details are very different and you're not just copying and pasting in like different chunks of sentences to explain to um, make details about the student. You want to be specific and concise. You really want to limit this to one page because longer than that, usually admissions committees are reading thousands of these. So the more specific and concise and condensed that you can make it, the better. Again, similar to the Dean's List essay, gather additional information if you need it, especially if you're also talking about other activities they've been involved in. You really want to know what their major or their goal is when you're writing this essay because it's good to be able to relate the current experience that they're getting to working towards that goal. Including your contact information is always a really big plus. So when you're trying to, in case they have any specifics they want to contact you about, they can be able to call you or email you. And finally, if you know that you can't write a positive or a good letter about the student, say no. And I think this is actually really important because in your capacity, if you know that you can't talk about this student in a way that's going to be able to benefit them and somebody else might be able to, you want to give that person the opportunity to. And you also don't want to give the student the impression that you're going to go out of your way to write a really good letter and then kind of just you know, stand back their chances. So this is definitely one of those opportunities where you really want to be honest with the student and say, if you can't write the positive letter, you don't necessarily need to say why you can't do it, but just say that you're not able to write the right letter for them. So in conclusion, the main points that we had were for the Dean's List essay and also for recommendation letters, reading the criteria is very important. You definitely want to make sure that you are really aware that you're including details that relate to what's being asked for the essay or for the letter. You really want to make sure that the student is the focus of the essay. Highlight their accomplishments as clearly and specifically as possible. So even when you're writing a recommendation letter that's very condensed, you want to make sure that you're using examples and being very clear with your prose and your wording so that they're um, their work really shines through and how strong of a student this is really shines through. You want to make sure you have all the information to write the essay. A lot of times for recommendation letters, I have students fill out brag sheets. So basically, it's just asking them for very specific information about things that they would really like to be highlighted and things that they feel like are very important to them. So if you know that you're going to need that, definitely be sure to ask for that. And finally, proofread your essay or your letter and then ask for help with proofreading it because sometimes you won't catch something or somebody else will have a better way of saying a phrase or highlighting an example. And you want to just make sure that when you're doing these things, you're trying to show your student in the best light. So the more help you can get, the more proofreading you can get, the better just to be sure that you're doing the best you can for your student. Okay, so we do have um, questions already in the chat, and if you have more questions, please post them. Comments and concerns are also welcome. Um, so I will start. Uh, I will start um, 
reading questions and we can answer them. And if you have more questions, uh, just keep posting them in the chat. Um, so our first question is, how do you differentiate Dean's List essays between two kids that have similar expertise on the team? Um, and I actually, I had a little bit of this experience last year, so I can jump in first. I had um, two students who were both um, on my FTC team as well as my FRC team. And um, you obviously can't go into depth and highlight that contribution to the same degree uh, for both students. So I think in some ways what you want to do is really um, maybe outline a little bit first and think about for which one of these students is this the more important contribution when you're looking at two students with the same degree of contribution to the same thing you may end up mentioning it for one student and really highlighting it for another student because you think you know student a has four thousand characters worth of other stuff so if i just mention that they're on the ftc team i'm gonna get a four thousand great characters about other things student B, I have a lot to say about them. They're a great student, but um, I have a little bit more room to talk about this thing. So I think somewhat outlining both essays and a little bit picking and choosing where you go into depth and making sure that you don't go into depth on the same things for every student, even if they have similar experiences. Do you have any thoughts on that one, Lauren? All right. Um, so our next question is, do you have any advice for selecting Dean's List nominees from a lot of deserving students on my team? So what my team has started doing um, is we actually have the, um, we ask all of our students who are eligible, they're in the 10th or 11th grades to submit um, an app, um, like application. Basically we just ask them to send us a paragraph on why they think they should be picked for Dean's List. So um, that kind of, any student who doesn't feel like they're passionate about being interested in the award, that takes them out of the pool. And it also gives us just basically when Lauren was talking about the brag sheet um, that gives um, us kind of like a brag sheet for the Dean's List Award. Um, so when we go to write the essay, we really... Um, can focus on those details. And then the next thing that um, we do is we really compare it to those criteria that we went over early in the presentation. Because you probably have a, a ton of kids who are fantastic on your team, but the award is judged on the criteria. So then you really want to hold up their accomplishments to the criteria and say, which of my students is closest to the criteria. Um, if I'm a professional working as a mentor on a first team, can I write my recommendation letter from that perspective as well? Is it a good idea to use company to use company letterhead? Um, so when you're writing as a mentor, um, I definitely think you want to include your professional experience. Um, so you're definitely um, 
you're definitely using that um, experience. Um, but, uh, and I, I believe like when you're writing a recommendation letter as a mentor, especially if it's for a scholarship or something like that, um, using your company letterhead, especially if you're related, if your company is related to the industry they're going into, that would make sense as well. Um, but certainly when you're writing a recommendation, you're going to be talking from the perspective of your expertise. So you're speaking as a mentor. You don't obviously want to go into too many details on who you are as a person, but um, certainly you want to reference who you are. Um, when writing Dean's List recommendations, any idea how to write if the student is unsure or wishy-washy on their major or goals? Um, so for Dean's List, you don't actually need their major or goals for the essay, although they may be asked in the interview. So that is a good thing to talk with them about to help them come up with a good answer if they are um, if they aren't sure, um, to help them talk about, to help them come up with a good answer for what they want to say, if they are asked about what their goals are, they should have a strong answer even if they, um, don't know what they're going to do, if they can talk about things that they're interested in. Um, as far as it, for a recommendation letter, that is where you might focus more on their goals. If they're wishy-washy, again, See if they have a direction. Like a student might not know for sure, I want to go into engineering, um, but they might know, I'm not sure what I want to do, but I'm most interested in math and science. Um, or I want to go into something in medicine or something like that. Um, if they really don't know and they're going in completely undecided, um, focus the recommendation letter on the qualities of your student. Um, usually when it comes to their goals that um, I use that mostly in the conclusion to talk about like the skills about them that I've highlighted will really serve them in their future career. I said that they were hardworking. I said that they were um, inquisitive, that kind of thing, and that'll really help them. So you would just kind of lean towards the skills that I highlighted will make them a great student, will make them a great contributor to the university community um, if you don't have specific goals. Um, I think most of the teams show their essays to the nominated students prior to the interviews. Do you agree or recommend? That's actually a requirement of the Dean's List um, and you absolutely should the kids should know their essays very well. As the judges, um, if we're doing our job, the essays are how we come up with um, our list of questions. So if your students are preparing for their Dean's List essay and you're helping them, they should be preparing based on that essay. So the things you highlight about them should be in should be what something they're aware of and prepared to answer questions on. I actually make sure my students have read my essay before they submit it, before I submit it to make sure that they feel comfortable with everything I've said, to make sure that they feel that everything I've said is a good reflection with them, of, of them, to make sure that everything that I have talked about are things that they feel are their major contributions and are things that they would want to talk about in the nomination. Um, if the other thing is that your students may get the question of, is there anything in the, that isn't in the essay that you want to talk about, which there really might be because I know, for example, one of my students last year, um, He's a fantastic student, he's a great contributor, and there's a huge section of what he contributed to the team 
that was really important to him and that I thought was really important that I just couldn't get in the essay at all. There were no characters for that. Um, and we had talked about that if that question came up, that that was what he was going to talk about because um, it was a big contribution, but there just wasn't enough room. And a lot of your Dean's List kids are going to be those types of kids. Um, so really what you want is for your Dean's List kids to know their essays quite well. That's going to make them the most prepared for their interviews. Um, all right. So thank you guys so much for uh, attending our presentation. Sorry that we lost Lauren for a bit at the end there. Um, uh, hopefully you guys are more prepared to write your recommendations and your Dean's List essays. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of University Day. Jeez.